So here we have our coaxial indicator set up. Uh, th this particular um, instrument here, this uh, this dial indicator, is really just to stop the um, the coaxial indicator just from uh, spinning around uh, once we start the machine. But we know that we're roughly in the centre, and we'll soon find out um, just how far we're away. Um, and I'm just going to zero that there, and uh, we'll soon find out once we once we start the machine up. And that's not that far away, actually. And there we have our centre position. So, we... so I'm going to treat this first hole slightly differently than I'm going to treat this one, because this this hole here is the one that's just straight through. We can just drill that one out. Um, we'll step it up, but maybe put an 8mm um, or 9mm uh, drill through here, and then we'll step it out to the tapping size, which is 108 This one, because of uh, the way that the bolt is still inside here, I'm just using a... Uh, just a, a little milling cutter here, an 8mm milling cutter. What I want to do is I want to just get a flat onto the top of the, the bolt because it is a bit irregular in there. And uh, <clears throat> when I get that in, uh, get it flattened off and then we'll go in with a centre drill uh, just to make sure that the drill doesn't veer off and uh, and we start to yeah, get getting getting a hole that's, uh, that's off centre. So, um, so the first thing to do is, uh, is flatten this off. So we've now got a flat spot on there. You can't quite see it, but there is a flat spot on the um, uh, on the top of that, uh, that that broken bolt. So what we can do now is just put a centre drill in there and get that centred up, and uh, we'll just do that in two seconds. There is our, there is the remains of the bolt uh, that came out there. So this is now going to go in with our 10.8 millimeter um, drill uh, for the correct tapping size. Now you'll also notice uh, when I start the machine, I drop the speed way down because I want to be able to control and get as an accurate a hole as possible. I'm just going to use a little bit of cutting fluid on there.
And there we have it. Uh, that's the first hole uh, drilled out. So we've now got our spring-loaded center in, and I'm just going to bring the, the tap into position now. Now, what I would um, normally do is I would use this, uh, this tap wrench here, but unfortunately, we're going to have a problem here with it uh, snagging on this, so I'm going to cheat and just use a, an adjustable spanner just to bring that down. So um, what we can do now is just put a little bit of preload on our center so we know that we're bang in line and we'll just lock off uh, that and then we can start feeding our uh, tap in. I'm going to use some thread tapping oil here just to give it a bit of lube. This incidentally is an intermediate tap. Uh, there's more of a taper at the beginning uh, of the threads on this. Um, but what I'll do is I'll clear it with the uh, the plug tap uh, just to run that through and uh, that'll be fine. So I'll just get on with this now, just get this get this tapped out and I'll come back to you once this is uh, once this is through. So this now gives you a close-up uh, of the hole that we've drilled and tapped, and, uh, and this is now our pin lock insert, uh, which will screw inside there. Now you can see now the, how the mechanism works. Um, once this um, screws in, now it will get down to a certain point and it should start to snag. Now that's down to its optimum point there, because what's actually happening here is these pins are beginning to uh, interfere with the thread. So we are about uh, at the position where we would drive these pins in. Well, I'm not gonna do that on this setup. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get this, um, get this mounted on the vise and then we've, we've got a good um, positive flat surface underneath here and then we can drive these pins home. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do exactly the same process on the second hole. And then once I've drilled this out and got it tapped, then uh, we'll get back to the bench and, uh, and then we'll get these uh, get these uh, inserts driven home and uh, that should be job done. So here we are back at the bench with uh, two holes uh, duly drilled out and tapped and it's now time to install the inserts. Now, uh, I'm going to use uh, a little bit of um, Loctite on this. I just want to make absolutely sure that there's, uh, there's no movement, um, that nothing can, uh, that can move once this is installed back on the bike. Um, just a little precaution. Uh, I think it will probably do more good than harm. And, uh, and what we'll do is just don't need to use a huge amount of this stuff, um, but what it will do is it will set and uh, uh, it will just help the uh, the pins. Now what I want to do here is I just want to get this down to uh, this insert just below where the counter bore is, uh, because I don't want the, the head, we're not going to use the screw of course, but we don't want the head of that screw to be relying on the insert there. So uh, I just want to make sure that that's just below. Um, so we're relying on the casting counter bore. And I'll do exactly the same with the second one. Just bring that to, again just below uh, the casting there 
So our inserts are in position. So what we can do now is uh, we can just drop this pin just into the uh, into the insert there, and then what we'll do now is just put that sleeve over, and uh, and that just drops down. And again, it just stops the everything from moving apart. Um, so we'll get this now in position, and really it's just a question tapping these home. Again, drop that over. Make sure it's in a good position. So there we have it. Um, that is our caliper with the uh, um, the nut inserts uh, uh, installed. And um, some of you might actually have picked up on the fact that probably I've got this the wrong way around in the sense that um, I was convinced that actually the the screw went in through that way, thinking that uh, that counterbore was for the head of this particular screw. But you know, I'm thinking about it, and I've just suddenly, you know, it just, you know, just clicked into my head, and I thought, I'm going to make here. It's got to be that way around, because um, that's the way that the the screw or the bolt, whatever you want to call it, will actually go into uh, into this. Um, so this counterbore that's on the top here must be something to do with a kind of a grommet or some kind of cap that goes on there. Um, but uh, I've only just kind of just figured that out, you know, um, I should have, I should have maybe picked up on that a wee bit earlier, but, uh, you know, I think it's just an age thing possibly, you know, but, um, but anyway, it, um, that is in a lot better condition than it was when we first started out. And, um, especially with these, uh, these rusty old, uh, uh, screws that, uh, that were in there. So, um, so that's good to go and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and, uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you on the next one.